Good morning, thanks for joining us. It's 10.06. So the Conservative MP David Davis is proposing a new law which would prevent Brits from being debanked. Yeah, the former minister said it is a travesty that Nigel Farage and others have been blacklisted for their political views. He is now draw drawing up a private member's bill to give every Brit the legal right to a bank account. So former Brexit Secretary David Davis joins us now. Good morning, David. Mm. Thank you. Um, Thank you ever so much for joining us this Monday morning. Uh, I was going to say on this summer's morning, but it's actually <laughs> tipping it down outside. Um, it would come, I think, as a surprise to some people to know that you don't already have a right to have a bank account in this country because not having one means you really can't function barely in society anymore. Well, that's right. I mean, we used to uh, have a right. When the, uh, before we privatised the post office, uh, we had that right because the government could insist that anybody could at least have a post office account. I mean, not very sophisticated, but at least they had an account. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you're right. I mean, the ability of banks to stop your account to debank you was not widely known. I mean, I first raised it, oh, two years ago with uh, uh, another victim and uh, suffered really in a similar way to the way Nigel Farage did. But unlike Nigel, he didn't want his name in the public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike Nigel, he wasn't willing to put up a really serious public fight. And so we couldn't do anything about that. I couldn't move the government. I couldn't move uh, the banks. But once they did it to Nigel, well, of course, <laughs> they bit off more than they could chew. And what we've, what the world at large is now clear on is that banks can arbitrarily cut off your banking services. And that, as you say, is quite wrong. I mean, you, uh, we're, we're shutting, we're shutting uh, uh, ticket offices, uh, uh, railway mm. ticket offices now. You can't even buy a, 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 a train ticket mm. if you haven't got a credit card or a bank account of some sort now uh, to do it online. So, so the sheer uh, size of online transactions, the sheer reduction in the use of cash, uh, the all, all of the social trends mean we really have to have a bank account to operate a normal life, and therefore people should have that right. So, David, talk us through for the layperson how the private members' bill works, and how likely is this to be mandated into British law? <laughs> Careful, you'll lose most of your audience. To this, but, but very, very quickly, um, we have a ballot for, for private members' uh, bills each year. You can win that. There are some ways of taking what's called the 10-minute rule bill and carrying it through if everybody supports it. Uh, so those are the sort of two big mechanisms. Uh, if that doesn't work, you can tack something on to a piece of government legislation that exists already. Although, of course, the ideal... Uh, and um, I'm sort of hoping that they'll give in. Uh, the ideal is the government picks it up and actually does it itself. So there are three strands you can pursue, and I will pursue all of them until we get what we want. And why might they not do that, mm. David, given that we've just said how important it is? What might the resistance be from the government? Well, there have been, there have been a variety of back pressures. I mean, about, I think, in the middle of June, Claire Fox... Uh, uh, tried to move a motion which would do away what they call politically the the, the issue of politically exposed persons that's people like me uh, or indeed like like Nigel who have had political influence or have political influence uh, and the idea that they they shouldn't be they shouldn't be able to have bank accounts and uh, without very strict controls uh, because they might be bribed so that was the that was what she tried to get changed and there was back pressure and I understand the back pressure came from the home office well specifically from mi5 and the police forces because they saw that uh, this was a weapon for them in the fight against international crime but it's a very very crude weapon a very heavy-handed weapon so that's one reason second reason is of course you know don't underestimate the banks themselves they have huge influence in government mm. uh, they uh, they uh, they have access uh, to the treasury and so on and the treasury doesn't want to upset them or or damage them uh, or indeed undermine our own banking capabilities but nearly every other country has this right you know the uh, france for example if you live in france you've got a right to a bank account um and uh, so it, it, there, i think there's no overwhelming reason that there might be a lot of inertia a lot of hesitation but frankly if they're faced with the option of me moving a private member's bill or doing it themselves they might think it's the easier thing
to do it themselves. Yeah, David, what's been fantastic about this campaign? You know, Nigel um, utilising GB News to force political change. Thank you for taking this up um, on behalf of Nigel. But not just Nigel, because we saw initially, it was like, well, it's Nigel Farage, who cares? And now we saw Gina Miller, the arch remainer, Grant <laughs> Shapps, of course. So this is, of course, is now across the political spectrum. But David, a more concerning thing for me is the emergence of thousands of small business people having their accounts frozen out. What I want to ask you, as part of GB News' Don't Kill Cash campaign, I'm hearing that people that are trading in cash are looked upon in, a, in, a, in an unsatisfactory way by banks because they want cash to die out. They're closing thousands of the banks. Is this, you think, the weaponization of closing down bank accounts, part of the banks are raising cash from the way we trade? I'm not sure. I think that there are two different things going on there. Uh, and look, you can see from the point of view of the banking sector, the point of view of the sort of large corporate sector, uh, not having to deal with cash saves them money. You know, it saves them having to go through all the issues of having trans trans transport arrangements, uh, having uh, safes and so on, uh, uh, tills and the rest. So you can see why it's much cheaper. So I think that's a straightforward economic pressure more than anything else. I mean, I don't like the idea of doing away with cash because at the end of the day, cash is an anonymous medium. You know, if I, if I buy something with a credit card or I buy something with anything else, it tells all sorts of people what I'm doing. Now, it doesn't matter in my case, it's pretty much public domain, but lots of people might want to, want to keep their privacy. So I think actually, the removal of cash got all sorts of other problems associated with it. But you're quite right. The removal of cash means the denial of a bank account is a, de is a destroying measure. It's something which can completely wreck your business. I mean, there have been, I mean, I mean, by the way, it's not thousands. I think it's tens of thousands. I mean, uh, uh, Nigel has shown today it's about a thousand a day. Mm, so you're talking yeah. tens of thousands of small businesses, and they're just completely destroyed by this. I mean, big ones can sort of find a way around it, but small ones, what do you do if suddenly you can no longer pay the bills? You can no longer receive money by by uh, uh, by bank transfer and so on. You know, you're you're out of business. You're dead. Oh, really? So we, we uh, know, I think um... the removal of cash makes this a lethal action. David, Rishi Sunak, even before he was prime Again? minister, um, even before he was prime minister, Rishi Sunak was incredibly excited by the idea of central banking digital currencies. Mm. He is a technocrat at heart. We know that his number two, Jeremy Hunt, is very much uh, very keen on the way that China often uh, runs life out there. Do you think that you are the exception amongst those uh, the people in the Conservative Party who think like that in wanting to keep cash? What does Rishi Sunak think? Does he want to keep cash? Uh, well, I think uh, Rishi is, is, is a fan of digital cash, and in that, I think he's wrong, frankly. Uh, I think the risks with digital cash are really, really quite serious. Um, uh, but you know, he, that, he was uh, he was you know he was a chancellor. You know, he's surrounded by people for whom this makes it life a bit more convenient. One of the great uh, pressures in modern life is that convenience overcomes really important traditional rights, whether it's privacy or whether it's independence or whether it, you know, all, all, all these things. So I'm afraid I think both, I, I think uh, Rishi's wrong in that respect. Um, I think what will happen as people discover some of the weaknesses and problems of digital currency is they'll pull back and realize that it's, 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 it's a, a dangerous mechanism um, uh, by itself anyway, if you allow it by itself. Yeah. So I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's one area where I'm, I disagree with our prime minister. Good for you. Yeah, and you know, we've seen this moving from politics, David, into banks spying on people's social media feeds. You know, rank and farm members of the public having their social media feeds, their Facebook accounts, their Twitter accounts monitored by banks, an insidious attack on free speech as well as the financial aspect, Mr. Davis. This is this is one of the reasons, incidentally, that GB News is so important because a lot of the people doing this won't think they're being prejudiced. Mm. They're surrounded by a single view of the world, right? Uh, we, see, we see this everything, whether it's Brexit or woke issues or whatever. They see this single view of the world and think anybody outside it is somehow strange or extreme. Mm. Yeah. And one of the great things that the introduction of GB News has done is said, no, no, there are a lot of very, very sensible people who disagree with you, take a different view. And you know what we're trying to do, what Nigel's trying to do is to break that single grip 
on, on, on public opinion and successfully, I think. I mean, it's one of the reasons that you've overtaken Sky and other people. But it's because you're actually reflecting what real people actually think. <laughs> it, it takes that a lot. That is why we love having you on the show, David Davis, because you are also from our very own brand of common sense. And it is lovely to see you this morning. Thank you so much.